Hello. <laughs> oh, let's hope that uh, this is now working. Yes. Hurrah. Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah. Uh, sorry about that, everyone. We um, had a slight technical glitch and uh, welcome. Welcome to the very first Hathor hosts uh, from my living room. <laughs> also now the um, studio. Uh, so I'm just waiting for Kate to send me a request. And as soon as she's done that, then we can get cracking with the interview. Um, and here it comes. So go. Hopefully we should be going live in a second with Kate. Um, hello everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we are connecting. Hi! Hi! <laughs> oh my god. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Did you get my email? <laughs> Not yet, no. <laughs> Guess who thought it was 9 p.m.? <laughs> Well, I said technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, that's me. I'm the technical difficulty. Oh what my God, happens? I just ran upstairs. I ran up, I'm wearing my pajamas. I'm literally wearing Excellent. my pajamas. I ran upstairs and I was like, ah, <laughs> make mascara. <laughs> I think is... pajamas are the perfect lockdown day anyway. I think I mean, so, you know, I think we're, so. We're not going anywhere, right? <laughs> yeah, I've got my UCLA, uh, my, I'm showing you my boobs. That's a good start, Kate. I've got my UCLA um, pajama t-shirt. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm in sweats. I have a jumper on, but I'm in sweats. Okay, um, good. We're both wearing pants. That's exactly. what matters. Well, yeah. Are we? I mean, trousers. <laughs> trousers. <laughs> oh, How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I had a momentary slight panic there. Where I was like, what do you mean? Where are you? I just leave you hanging? No, <laughs> never. I was like, never. what the hell will I talk about anyway? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm here Not now. Not at all. Not at all. You're <laughs> here and we can rock and roll. So, okay. Hello and welcome. And thank you for Hi. being my first victim of guest. That I thank you <laughs> for having me as your Thanks. first victim guest. <laughs> <laughs> my first prime, I should say. Um, yes. Like, yes, indeed. Yes. Um, I just I'm wanted so to delighted. terrify you. <laughs> I'm so delighted that you, that you said yes to doing this because I think... Um, we're in such a sort of strange time right now and people are feeling, we are all feeling slightly off kilter, mm -hmm. some days better than others. And I just thought very often uh, when we meet at conventions as actors, and we got to meet last year um, yeah. and really hit it off, but we don't get that much time together because you're always being rushed off to other events or to other things. Yeah. And one of the things that struck me is that I really want to get to know you and my other guests a little mm -hmm. better. And I thought, what better way of doing it than uh, through this, this format? So um, it's a great idea. Well, thank you. Let's, uh, yeah. let's hope you like the questions. <laughs> well, this is the other thing that I'm going to say to you is that I had in my calendar <laughs> from <laughs> since I was thinking 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is very foolish because it would have been the middle of the night for you. <laughs> I keep thinking you're on the West Coast. I think that's where I get confused because I think uh, of you uh, as uh, living, living out West, but you're in England, right? Right. Yes. Um, but so I was going to do, <laughs> I was going to prepare the questions. <laughs> at 5 p.m. I um, had it in my calendar. I'm like, from 5 p.m. until 9 p.m., I'm going to go through all the questions. So, yeah, you're getting the real off-the-cuff answers here. <laughs> and that is how it should be. That's it, yeah. And so, on that note, uh, mm -hmm. you grew up in Toronto. You I did. Have, uh, three siblings. So, where yes. are you in that uh, lineup? So, David, who is also an actor, yes. um, is the oldest Right. And I am the youngest. And so one of his favorite oh, things right. that happens is when people ask us, when we're together, when people ask us who's older, yeah. he gets a real kick out of that because he's nine years older. So he's always <laughs> like, oh, Kate's, Kate's the older one. He enjoys, uh, yeah, he enjoys that question. But he is the eldest. Yeah. He's nine years older than me. And then my sister Moira is eight years older. Right. My sister Jenny is five years older. And then there's me. And we also have two stepsisters who are two years older than me and five years older than me, Stephanie and Nikki. Wow. So David is yeah. surrounded by a lot oh, yeah. of powerful, intelligent, special women. Oh, yeah. He is surrounded. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I, bet you're I the think only we've ones... helped him. We've helped him with his love life, I think. I'm sure. But I'm <laughs> he sure secured a good one. You can put him in his place, right? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. And he's good. He's like, he's 
he definitely understands women and yeah. that whole thing of like bitches be crazy or whatever like I've never heard that come out of his mouth ever he doesn't good. think that way yeah. and I think it's it's been good for him because he has like a lot of female friends and obviously he has a wonderful lovely wife so yeah great so was the Hewlett household an artistic household were you encouraged to go to the theater much or no no no, no my dad is uh, an infertility doctor wow and my mom, they've been divorced a long time, but my mom is um, uh, a professor. She used to be a nurse, but she's a professor. Your mom and... sounds amazing. She is amazing. In a minute. She I is think. amazing. Really? You should interview her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she's, sign her off. Sign her she's off. climbing the walls. <laughs> uh, she's in a tiny, tiny little uh, flat in Notting Hill. Right. Oh, so she's yeah. down the road from us as well. She's, we yeah. We could get yeah. the inside story from mama. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but so they, they were very, um, you know what? I bet my, bro my brother would give you a different answer probably, but because I'm so much younger, yeah. um, <laughs> I had a different experience. Like David kind of paved the way a little bit. Uh, yeah. I think, it, he, you know, we were never allowed to, nobody was ever allowed to miss school for auditions or anything like that. That was not supported mm -hmm. and so it was like if you want to do this little thing on the side you can but it's not going to get in the way of your schoolwork and having a proper career and stuff <laughs> whoops um <laughs> but uh but they were supportive they were yeah. always supportive but arts was no the arts were not a big thing in our house at all it, it was more um not that we were pushed into other directions at all it was just sort of you know do your work and be responsible and yeah. Um, all of that stuff. So where do you think that love of theater and performing came from from you? Do you, do you have a clear memory of like the first uh, stage play or film or the first thing that you saw that made you go, that's what I want to do? I think that, so both my brother and my oldest sister were right. both really involved in theater in school. Mm -hmm. And I really looked up to them. And I, every time I saw them on stage, I really wanted to do that. And then when I was in grade five, yeah. um, so I was about 10, Right. We, we did this mini music, we did a mini version of The Sound of Music. It was like 10 minutes or something, like every grade had to do one. Yes. And I, and I played Maria. I think I bullied my way into playing Maria, but I played Maria. Um, right. And it was one of those things, like that feeling uh, my friend Andrea and I were, it was an all girls school. So my friend Andrea and I were Maria and Captain Von Trapp. I'm still friends Fantastic. with her. And I remember that moment of us being on stage together, singing, yeah, acting. And we had this like emotional moment and the audience was clapping. They were clapping at her actually, because she did this like breakdown. She broke down <laughs> and they were all like, oh. And right. I just remember that feeling of being like, this is so incredible it's yeah. such an incredible feeling to be in front of a crowd and feel like they're all with you and I think that's probably where it started for me but I was always doing you know I would hold auditions for nothing like I would hold auditions in the playground and stuff and be a bossy boots <laughs> what to be like your friend <laughs> I I don't know what was I was so bossy I was so bossy but I would I would hold auditions for things that never happened yeah. And like do callbacks and stuff. And I love that. Oh my God. So yeah, it was always something I loved, but I think that was the start of it. It's funny. I had that reaction when you said the sound of music, because um, it's a question I get asked a lot too, about what made me, did I know I wanted to be an actress? Yeah. And I remember I must've been about six or seven. And my parents took me to see, my mom took me to see a, a production of the sound of music in South Africa. Oh. Oh. And I, at interval, I said to her, what, uh, those children, they're not really that man's children, are they? And she said, what do you mean? And I was like, well, they're, they're pretending. And she said, yes. And I said, what's that called? And she said, well, it's called acting. And I said, that's what I want to do when I grow up. Like, I knew. Yeah. And then two years later, they took me to an open call for Annie, me <gasps> and 2,000 other little kids going, Tamara, Tamara. Oh, like, my God. And I got in and I remember vividly that feeling of stepping onto the stage and being really terrified. Mm -hmm. And the minute I started singing, which no one in my family knew I could do because I'd never done it. My mother was like, <sighs> and the minute that happened, I was like, oh yeah, this feels, 
this is my home. This is where I want to be, you know? Yeah. So the sound of music has a, a special place for us. For oh us my both. gosh. And we both went to all girls schools, which we'll get back to in a little yes. while as well. <laughs> I'm intrigued to, intrigued to hear how that messed you up. Because <laughs> I know it messed oh, me up. <laughs> in so many ways. <laughs> um, so after school, you attended the uh, very prestigious National Theatre School in Montreal. And how was yeah. your drama school experience? Was it a good one? I mean, mine it was. was. But, yeah. Mine was incredible. It was incredible. Well, um, right. My So... So my experience was that I, I kind of gave up on the whole acting thing after high school, like in high school, I would say I kind of gave up on it, even though I knew it was what I wanted to do. I thought because I was, I was, you know, overweight, I thought that it was impossible to be an actress if you weren't super, super skinny. And I'd, I'd been sort of told that by a few, you know, people who should not have said that, but right. um I, so I sort of thought, oh, well, this is not something that I'm going to be able to do. And so I went to, I went to university. Oh, oh yeah, sure it is. Sure yeah. it is. It's a lot of gin. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, and I am <laughs> not watching. I do not have the Love Island, <laughs> Love Island Australia I finale on pause. I no, I do not. not. <laughs> Next time I'll do it in a bikini. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so yeah, so I had kind of given up on it, and I went to university first, and I did right. my degree, and. It wasn't, I didn't even do any drama when I was there until like my last year. Oh, and wow. then I had done, I did a production of Little Shop of Horrors and I, that's when it came back again for me. I was like, this is something that I have to do. Yeah. And I, so after university, I was in Toronto for two years and I was trying to make it work. And it was really, like, all the weight stuff was coming up again, even though I had, I had like lost a bunch of weight in a not very wow. healthy way. And I, was still coming up again. I, I realize now they just tell everyone that, right? They just yeah. tell everyone yeah. you're, you're whatever, you're, you're wrong. Yeah. But I was really struggling with it. And then my agent broke up with me by snail mail. Right. Like yeah. I got a letter in the mail saying, we are no longer representing you. And I was like, okay, I'm done. Really cool. Yeah. And I applied for a whole bunch of teachers colleges and I got into, I think it was Oxford. I was going to go and do my teaching degree. And the only theater school I applied for was the national theater school. And I just thought, why not? You know, why not yeah. put one, one out there? And my friend, Michelle Giroux had gone and had the greatest experience. And she said, I can see you there. I just, I know you're going to go there, yeah. but they only let in like 14 people a year from all over Canada. So I thought there's yeah. no way. And I got into the teacher's colleges and I was like, oh, that's nice, you know, but when I got into theater school, I just like burst into tears. And I remember again, that was a feeling of like, I'm on the right path. Yeah. And I, it was a weird time to be at the national theater school because the head of the school had just left. So he chose us right. and then he left. So we never got to work with him. Oh. And so we had like an interim head of school whose name is Janine Pearson, who's incredible, right. incredible works at Stratford. But she was only there for a year. And then basically, like, the regime kept changing. Mm -hmm. And so it was a difficult time to be there. And I didn't get to do a lot of Shakespeare, which is what I really, really wanted to do. I didn't, yeah. I don't feel I have that knowledge that I wanted to have. Yeah. Yeah. But I had, we were the first ever class that had more women than men. And it was nine women and four men. And it was just an incredible group of people and very, very strong, confident, powerful women. And we played a lot of male roles and right. we, we did, we did Wars of the Roses. Wow. It was six, six hours. Oh my God. How amazing. And we did that. And I mean, we did do Shakespeare, but we didn't study right. Shakespeare. We kind of just got thrown into it, but yeah. So, so my experience there was, was pretty amazing. And the friends that I, you know, my, my best friends now, um, at least three of them are from that time. Right. Okay, that's an yeah. Amazing, yeah, I'm glad. So that was it's a, a great really school, positive, and you so you were thrust into the real world with this great yes. positive experience. And so, yes. what was your first kind of big break, or even what you believe to be your first big break post drama school? Yeah, so I think I think NTS itself was a big break because it opened all kinds of doors, and I, yeah. I'm so grateful for that. Um, so there was that, and then I think the first big ish thing that I got. It was a, it was a CBC show. 
um, CBC, do you know, the, is CBC like, is our, our like Canadian broadcast. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's like our public. National, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. BBC, right. And, um, there was a series that was called 11 cameras right. and it was all webcams. It was a primetime series, but it was all done to look like webcams. And it was like 2000 and four or something. So it was wow. actually so, way ahead, yeah, way ahead. And I booked one of the leads in that and it was 19 episodes and we shot it in 19 days. Wow. And it was like, Crazy. you just got thrown in and they shot all of your own, they, they shot all of your stuff, but it yeah. was like a soap opera on webcams. And it was actually amazing. Yeah. Um, but it kind of got buried. They sort of buried it in the summer. And so no one really saw it. But it made me really comfortable on camera. Yeah. Um, and it was like really, you know, we had no dressing rooms. We had no, <laughs> like, it was not fancy at all. Yeah. Gorilla. Yeah. 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 But everyone in that show has gone on to do incredible things. And so it was it was a great group of people to work with. I learned a ton from them yeah. and I really thought the show was smart. It was way ahead. It was too far ahead of its itself. But, um, then because of that, I think I had the confidence to do Stargate and I don't know if I would have been able to do that if I hadn't done 11 cameras first. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? How things happen at a time. And then sometimes yeah. if we're in it, we can't really see it. But then yes. you look back and you think, oh, wow, exactly that. You would have, it prepared you for Stargate, which it did nicely to Stargate. Because <laughs> everyone here, most of the people on here are avid, avid Stargate fans. Yeah, and I said so, Stargate and my phone just burst into flame. <laughs> what? Did everyone else hear that? Um, so I, I read somewhere when I was doing Thomas, my search. Thomas, don't start. Don't start. <laughs> Sorry, he's barking. Oh, oh, it's the dog. I thought it was like Alexa or something. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Don't he, stop. Barks, Don't he stop. barks when I'm bored, when he's bored. Sorry, he's... Thomas. <laughs> I'm not coming up there. Okay, he I speak to him in. like a human. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I was doing my research about you, uh, which sounds very fancy, basically I was doing a lot of reading online. <laughs> and um, one of the things that struck me was that the role of, of Dr. Was she, Dr. Right? Dr. Jeannie Miller? No, I was not. Oh, she was a scientist. I was, uh, I, I was like, I was born scientist, but I was not practicing right. scientist. So I, was a, I was a mother, a mother and wife, and I was a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I read that uh, Martin Sherrod seen you on stage and was so utterly blown away that he was like we have to come her. we have to find a role for her so how did the stargate uh experience or how did that job come for you i mean I'm, obviously your brother was in it yes that yeah necessarily you know guarantee one getting a role in anything Sometimes yeah oh so, god no no so what i mean was it's that um audition experience is this you? crazy loud for you is that crazy loud no not for me the barking okay great no. good i'm gonna ignore him because that's what we do that's okay. our thing yes um <laughs> so yeah, the, it was so funny when I, I was going through, like, I looked through your questions when you first sent them, and I saw this one, and I was laughing so hard because <laughs> the story that I was told right. was my brother's story. Oh, and yes, my brother's story, story was that it was all his, it was all him, right? Like, <laughs> I didn't know that Martin Garrow saw him. I don't remember Martin Garrow seeing me in something, and, like, when you said that, I was like, oh, yeah, you can come and see me in a play. But I didn't know that it had anything to do with that because David takes all the credit for it. And he's like, he's like, I guess that he had been talking about, they had been talking about that character having a sibling right. for a long time. And then it was supposed to be a brother. And I guess he changed it to sister. That's right. Again, yeah. it's all suspicious. It's a bit suspicious. Yeah. But he said he changed it to sister and that they liked that idea. And then when they went, they started talking about that role. And then David wrote a movie called a dog's breakfast right. for he and I to act in and play siblings. Yes. And he was like, oh, I wanted them to see our dynamic on camera and all that. So I thought it was kind of like all because of him. And I had forgotten about the Martin Garrow side of it, <laughs> but you can remind him. Yeah. I can be like, um, <laughs> and then I did, I totally had to audition and I had to do a callback and like, it was all normal. You know, I, I had to do all of that stuff still. Yeah. And, which is a weird thing to be like auditioning to play your brother's sister. Yeah, exactly. But like for in a way a job that you already have. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I think I've been cursed with it my whole life. <laughs> um, 
so yeah so i i auditioned and it it went well and then the, the way it was written was martin garrow wrote that first script that i was in and it was very much like our voices yeah and i mean mckay is a, a very there's a lot of mckay in david um and uh yeah so the banter came very naturally and stuff like that and uh the only thing that was hard was the sort of like I love you, and that sort of thing. We were always like, oh, oh. <laughs> Siblings do not talk to each other like that. <laughs> um, was it a, so it sounds like it was a very happy experience and one that sort of naturally was quite organic because you could bounce off each other quite easily. Yes, um, and you know, he was great. He was so great. Um, when I was in his movie, he was a bit more relaxed about like, like making fun of me in front of the crew and stuff like that, and then yeah. they would all make fun of me. But with Stargate, he was actually very much like a proud big brother. And he he just made it so comfortable for me. And then Amanda Tapping was the other person oh, I did my yeah. first scene with. And she she was so awesome and so nice. Yeah. And um, I had taken the red eye. And I had to go directly, I think, from the airport to my fitting to the to set and it was yeah. crazy and I had never done anything this big like I had done 11 cameras but that was very different that was sitting in a chair and I'd never done sci-fi I had never done um the the really scientific talk you know like yes. I'd never done that and so yeah. um I got in there and it started off really well and then I just had one of those kind of like mental I just went blank Right. And she was so lovely and they were both, they were both so lovely and I totally got it back and it was, and it was fine. It, it, it wasn't a big deal except in my head. Yeah. But it was the perfect way to start was with those two. Yeah. Big you know what I'm going to do is just going to, I'm going to take you with me. Hopefully nothing. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we'll there's still nothing. <laughs> you're going to just see how, how um, messy my house is, but you're not going to no, hopefully get cut off. We, we'll all talk amongst ourselves. <laughs> I'm going to feed, um, I'm going to feed my dog because okay. that's and how you get her to stop. you're feeding your dog, uh, yes. maybe you can tell us, uh, certainly my time on, on Stargate was uh, absolutely rife with pranks. Um, oh yeah. Ian Anderson is a big prankster. Chris Judge is a big prankster. Oh my God. So, are there any pranks played uh, on you or by you in your, in your time on the show? You know something? I, it's a disappointing answer, but no, no, there were no. Oh, pranks. I'm in a now. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I know. I know. So boring. <laughs> I'm sure, like with David, because I only did four episodes. Yeah, over a period of three seasons, and so I, um, I'm so sorry. You're getting the real experience here. One no, second. That's good. This is what, it's real life, guys. It's you real know, life. We are is... in a, a very unique situation. Yeah. Globally, that uh, no one can go out, no one can do anything, and life has to kind of carry on. So. Yeah. So you if know, your dog is, <laughs> you know, if your dog's when being your dog's an hungry, arsehole. You gotta feed the dog. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna um, feed the dog. I'm going to show you the dog if you like. Yes, we want to see the dog. What's this the dog is Thomas. Thomas. This is Thomas. Hey, Thomas. Okay, let me, does this work if I do this? <laughs> yes, there, Thomas. Ooh, that's his puzzle bowl. Sexy bowl. That's his puzzle bowl that slows him down, right? Oh, that's brilliant. Slows you down. That's a great idea. Yeah. I need yeah. one of those. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I need one for chocolate almonds. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. I'm just looking at the time, and my God, it's flying by. So, um, how gonna... long are we? How long do we have? Well, we it's because it's the first one. We we have an hour on Instagram, okay. and the last okay. 15 minutes will be for for people to ask questions. Um, oh so yes, okay. I think we've got about another 15 minutes if we do the full hour. Okay, uh, but that's great. I haven't got that many questions left. Okay. Um, I was going to say we we were talking about your mom because when I was reading up about you again your mom is an influence. And I was like, she yeah. sounds incredible. She got her degree later on in her life. She did. Her master's, a PhD. Mm -hmm. She's learned Italian and then mm -hmm. moved there and then wrote a book. Is that oh right? yeah. She's, she, yeah, she's, um, she was a housewife and a stay at home mom yeah. for the first three kids for her first three kids. And then, when she found out she was pregnant with me, she cried. She told me that because um, I was a surprise. Right. Um, and, but she knew she had wanted to go back to school. So when I was born, that's around the time she went back to school. And it took her 
11 years to get her BA. Yeah. So she did it part time for 11 years. She got her BA in history. Yeah. And then she did her master's. She started focusing on Italian history and the Renaissance. Mm -hmm. And um, then she did her PhD. And Incredible. I used to edit for her. Like I would read, I would read her um, thesis and give her notes. And that's probably my first experience being like a story editor. Yeah. And yeah, she's incredible. And then she moved there. She had an Italian boyfriend, <laughs> <laughs> a young Italian boyfriend, Absolutely. and then another young Italian boyfriend. Love um, that. Yeah, but she is she is an inspiration. And the, you know, she had to learn Italian, and not only learn Italian, but learn Italian to the point where she could go to the archives in Italy yeah. and read old Italian documents. Yeah. So her vocabulary is incredible. Her accent. Oh, oh no, you've frozen. Oh, oh there we go. Whoops. <laughs> Am I back? Yes, you're back. You're back. Okay. Uh, I'm, that's because somebody called me. Okay. That's going to happen again. I'll have to wait. Tell okay. them you're, you're busy. They're going to have to wait. <laughs> I know. I want to do that, but I'm afraid of hanging up on you. Um, so, yeah, so she, she moved there and she lived there for, I think, seven years or something like that so and learned Italian. Would you say that she's a kind of a driving influence in your, um, because you're incredibly, incredibly diverse as an artist. I mean, you're a, oh, you're a complete triple threat. You write prolifically. You've had plays published and we're going to get onto those in a moment. You sing, mm -hmm. um, beautifully, I might add. I'm not sure about that, but thank you. <laughs> so, do you think that that's, she was a lot, had a lot to do with that? Or is that just something that you've just kind of gone, I want to try this. I want to try my hand at that. The writing, I think, was something I always did. I mm -hmm. always loved to write. I used to write songs when I was a little, little kid. And I always wrote poetry as well. Yeah. And then I think my mother, I, th I do think my mother, in a way, is a frustrated um, actor, writer. Like, I, she never got to do it, but she's so, like, she's very dramatic in a very fun way. And she is an incredible writer. And she does little poems and things. Like, she'll write little poems for for special occasions like funny little poems and i do think that i got that from her and i didn't necessarily know that right um but she's very creative and very um very witty yeah so i think it did and my 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 dad is actually he's not a writer at all but he's um he's got a great sense of humor they they had they both had a silliness to them he's like i used to say my dad is like captain von trapp meets John Cleese. Oh, perfect. It's very confusing <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> you're like, am I in trouble or is this going to be hilarious? <laughs> um, but yeah, and my mom is like Bridget Jones meets Ab Fab. Oh, I, even better. I'm so <laughs> going to interview your mother. I've got to meet you your mom. You should. Now. You should, yeah. I see a, I see a sort of new series. Kate's oh, God. <laughs> no, she, you know, she said to me, she's like, you're not allowed to write about me until I'm dead. <laughs> she doesn't, want, doesn't want it out there. I am anyway, but yeah. Um, so your latest play, The Swearing Jar, which is an amazing yes. title, by the way, is currently, oh, was in the process of being made into a film prior to, to the world coming uh, to a sort of grinding halt. Um, yes. Tell us a little bit about that experience, about writing sort of a, a stage play. Uh, and then did you, did you write the screenplay as well? I did. So I, yeah. I wrote the, I wrote this, the stage play over a period of, I think I started it while I was at theater school. It took me literally like 15 years or something to write. Um, it's just had so many think, versions. Think what it's about. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh my God. I'm so about, bad at, I'm watching. so bad at, I guess, you know what? I have to sort of do the, it's a tricky one to do a synopsis for. It's always been mm -hmm. hard because it's sort of not what you think it is, but I don't want to give it away. You know, cool. Yeah. Okay. But basically it's like, basically it's like, it's really hard to find the love of your life. What happens if you find two of them at the same time? And it's basically like this, um, the main character, it's, it's very much this one woman story. This, the character is named Carrie and she's throwing this big birthday concert for her husband yeah. and her, um, her guitar player who's accompanying her throughout the concert it becomes clear that 
there's a romantic connection between the two of them as well. So okay. it's sort of about that. And, right. um, and it's about, you know, is it true that there's like one person for each of us? And if you lose that person, is that it? You know, like if you yeah. don't end up with them, is that really it? Okay. Um, and it explores a lot of, a lot of different kinds of loss and, um, motherhood and all kinds of things. And it, it just went through so many different variations because it started as a play about infertility and then it turned into something else. And then I added all the music and that really opened it up as well. And so it's got a whole bunch of original music. Wonderful. Um, and yeah, it's like, it basically the main cast is just four four people, two women, two men. And then I kept writing new versions. I had it published. I, you know, I had a lot of success with it, but I was never really happy. Even the published version, I'm like, oh, it's not exactly right. Right. And when I when I adapted it into a feature, I was like, oh, okay. So it's it's a movie. Yeah. Like in my head, I think it was always a movie and I didn't realize that. And so I'm very, very happy with the screenplay and very excited about it. And, you know, it's hard to make a movie. That was a burp, not a motion. Um, <laughs> it's really hard to make a movie. Um, and it's been four years of yeah. my sister-in-law who's producing it. David's wife is producing right. it. Her name is Jane. Um, you know, she's been trying to get funding for four years and we've gone through all these different yeah, so actors fun. and actresses and all that. But we were, we were like greenlit. We were going, we were starting to shoot on May 4th. Yeah. And then it just all went away, but it would have been very tight anyway. So yeah, like we lost our director because of a whole series of misadventures. And um, so we lost our director and then, yeah, like we have an amazing leading lady who I'm super, super excited about. And mm -hmm. that's not, I don't think that's official yet, but she's amazing. Yeah. And when I heard her read it for the first time, I was like, oh, I never need to play this part ever again. And I like, she's like my avatar. She's so good. And so um, are you involved at all in it as a, from a performance point of view or only um, I, from a creative point of view? There's a small part that I wrote for my brother and there's a small part that I wrote for myself and right. we'll see, we'll see if it happens. I, that would be fun. But then I, I sometimes, I sometimes find it weird to be wearing both hats at yeah. once. And I would like to be on the set as the writer if the director yeah. will have me. Um, I, I would like to be on the set as the writer. And sometimes it does confuse people when you're like, I'm just going to pop over there and yeah. you know, it, it's putting weird. this hat on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see, but it would be nice to be involved because then you, you're always part of all the press and everything like that. Whereas if you're not in it, sometimes like the writer kind of falls away. Yeah. Like the director and the producer become everything. Right. And it really is a project that, that, has been with me for so long. So yeah. I would love to be involved as an actor, but we'll see. And so the plans are to, to sort of reconvene when this is all over. Hopefully. Yes. Great. Yeah. Cause everything is in place now. It's really official. It's actually going to happen, which mm -hmm. I didn't expect. And that's all happened in the last few months. Yeah. So it looks like it's going to go. It's just like the actress is on I'm like, I'm like teasing it, but the actress is on a big sci-fi show. And Ooh. if, if she, if that doesn't get pushed, that could be a problem for us and all of that. So it's all sort of schedule dependent and I really yeah. don't want to lose her. Um, so we just have to see, but I, I know that it will actually happen. Yeah. It's just a matter of when, and before I didn't think it would actually happen. So it's pretty exciting. Well, we will all be there cheering you on. Huge. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Before we hand over to everyone, cause we've got like, Oh yeah. Three minutes left. Um, oh gosh, okay. Serendipitously, tonight on um, uh, on the BBC, on the iPlayer, all the episodes of Mallory Towers are available. Which Yay! you also uh, co-wrote yes. and executive yes. produced, is that correct? So how did yes. this unbelievably quintessentially Enid Blyton uh, story find its way to you? I mean, you have yeah. the air, I know, but um, tell us a bit yeah, about that. Yes, so, okay, so I am the co-EP. Right. So um, the, the two head writers, um, Sasha Hales and Rachel, Rachel Flowerday, the two uh -huh. most British, British names I've ever heard <laughs> in my life, um, <laughs> they are the two head writers, and it's really their baby. Uh -huh. And I was brought on to be just under them, 
right. and to be the North American voice. So right. it was sort of like they wanted to always have um, a North American pass so that it wasn't like completely impossible for people to understand here. Right. And they also just wanted me to work as a story editor. So I, I gave notes on every single draft of every single script. And then I wrote two episodes. And so, yeah, I, I had those, those different jobs, which was really, really fun. So it was almost like working as a consultant on it. Yeah. And then being co-EP and getting to give notes on all the scripts and getting to work so closely with the head writers. Um, and then, yeah, the two scripts that I wrote, you know, things end up changing a lot always mm -hmm. with television. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if people even understand that, that when, you're, when your name is on a script, it just means you got paid for that script. Yeah, exactly. So, like, there are so many times, like, on my another show I worked on, which was called Backstage, one of the episodes that I wrote doesn't have my name on it. And one of the ones that I didn't write has my name on it. Um, but with, so with Mallory Towers, I would say that my second episode, which is called the ghost mm -hmm. is the most that I, is the most mine, yeah. but I do feel like a, um, a great sense of pride for the whole series and for the work that they did. I think it's really, really beautiful. And Rachel and Sasha are incredibly talented and very strong, you know, like they, they stuck up for their vision of the show. And mm -hmm. I think that they've done a beautiful, beautiful job. Yeah, so, the trailer looks fantastic. I was having a look oh, at yeah. it It's just so it's joyful. Like, yeah. And just yeah. right now. It know? is, you know. And the it's kids great. are amazing. They're all yeah. British, except for the one character who's Canadian. They're all British actresses. And it's, I think, the first 11 names on the call sheet were all female. Right. And um, the directors are like the British director um, Bex was uh, Bex Rycroft, I believe is her last name, mm -hmm. but she was one of the directors. And Bruce McDonald, who's like a huge director in Canada, who does yeah. like really edgy, really edgy stuff. Yeah, he was the director um, of the other half of the episodes, and they just did an incredible job. Oh, I can't so wait. I'm, just, and they shot all the interiors in Canada, and all the exteriors in England. So oh it's my. like. If someone walks into a room from yeah. outside, they were literally shot like four months apart in different countries. Wow. That, that always yeah. freaks me out, even when you're in something and that happens. Oh, my gosh. Like, when you watch it, something that you've been in and you watch the finished product, you're like, hang on, that wasn't even there. That was like yeah. a wall or you know, a bit of like um, a flat sort of covering a curtain or something. And then yeah. in the film, you look out the window and everyone goes, oh, my God, it looks so amazing. You're like, yeah, it wasn't there. I know. Or like green screen or all that stuff where you're like, oh, my gosh. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm really I'm very proud of the whole thing. And I think that the that Sasha and Rachel are so proud. And yeah, and I think I think it's going to do really well and this is only based on one book so yeah. you know there's there's so much room so for cool. more outstanding well i can't wait yeah. um i yeah. want to say thank you um, i had two more questions i don't know if i can quickly quickly squeeze them in um, okay i'll do maybe fast I'll just answers do one very just one okay. you were saying that um because of course you write music and you sing which we haven't even got to we'll have to do a second <laughs> part <laughs> uh, i read somewhere that you're very keen to write a musical what musical would you write yes Yes, so I so Swearing Jar has a lot of music in it, but it's not a musical. Right. Um, I'm working on a musical. There was a book called What Katie Did. Did you ever mm -hmm. read that? What, it was like a children's book from the 1800s, I think. Right. Um, I'm not that and, old, Kate. I know I ah! thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was written about you. <laughs> uh, it was a series of books, What Katie Did, What Katie Did Next, what Katie, all this right. stuff. And I loved these books as a child. And it's sort of like Pollyanna. Yes. The okay. story is a bit like Pollyanna. But so I wanted to turn what Katie did into a musical. I've been working on that for a while, but it's, it's about a, a child who ha who ends up with a disability after an ac accident. Right. And in the book, because it's so old fashioned, it was like, well, if you're a good person and you believe in God, you'll be able to walk again. And then when I reread it, I was like, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> and so I want to explore it with a very different ending and, and have right. her stay in a wheelchair and tell that story and have the main character, the main actor be in a wheelchair. And um, I'm really, yeah, I really want to dive into that one. So that's one of them. And then I had one that I just, I got a little bit of money to write that was called uh, Death, Love and the Death of Love. Excellent. which was like a song cycle. Yeah. But, but in the current climate, I'm just not excited to work on that one right now. No, no. maybe that one can wait. Maybe that one can wait. Yeah. And then I'm collaborating with a couple of incredible 
writers who are um, have done a lot of LA stuff and also have written a huge musical that went all over the world. And I'm, they have asked me to collaborate with them, and I'm super excited about that. And who knows? So, maybe there might even be Stargate, the musical, one day. Oh my gosh! Why not? Right? Why not? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Well, you I'd mean, love to hear David grumble about that. <laughs> and we have everybody in it. Everyone who sings, yeah. everyone who plays instruments, everyone who has yeah. it would be amazing. Oh my uh, gosh, yeah. So we are at that point where we're okay. going to hand over to everyone. Firstly, thank you so much um, thank you. for being my guest. And um, we got there in the end. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, I, sorry for being I, late. Don't be silly. Don't be silly. Uh, as I said, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I'm not entirely sure um, how to do this. I think if people just type up questions, we are ready to answer questions if you guys uh, want to do that. Um, I see somebody saying there's been a musical, Grey's Anatomy episode. Grey's Anatomy, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and of course, people are clapping. Questions. Oh, here's a question. <laughs> Which is your favorite scene? They go so fast. I know. Which is your favorite ah! scene? How do we make that? Oh, my God. Hang on, hang on. Oh, hang on. I can do it with a so, bad Do you know Bad Astronomer? Stargate SG-1, Stargate Atlantis. I'll hand it over to my you first. favorite scene. Oh, for me or for you? It's for us both, but I'll let you go. For us both. Um, oh gosh. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm going to give the shallow answer, which is that there's a scene where I run out of the room crying and I run into Jason Momoa <laughs> oh and my he's, he happens yeah. to be there and he gives me a big hug and I cry into his big, beautiful chest. <laughs> and I really enjoy that scene. Just watch it on repeat. And did you do that on the day? Did you be like, well, I'm not happy with that one. Can we do another one? <laughs> Can we go again? Can we go again? <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> um, mine, well, yeah, mine is also going to give a shallow answer, which is uh, I really loved coming out of the sarcophagus because I have awful, like my fingernails are always short because I'm always working and, mm -hmm. and they gave me these amazing nails and I just had to like sling oh. the sarcophagus, which was incredible. Um, oh, wow. Would you ever come down to Australia for a convention? I think that's for you because I have been to Australia for a convention oh. and loved it and would go back in a heartbeat. Um, well, with my current obsession with Love Island, Australia, I'm going to go find <laughs> love in Australia. Um, no, I would love, I've always wanted to go to Australia and I've always wanted to go to New Zealand. Those are two places that I've never been. And I would love to go to a convention in either of those places. Okay. Very so much. Yeah. Convention organizers, Armageddon Expo, if you're on here. Yeah. She wants to go, go down under. Uh, yeah. This is, oh, hello. Hang on. Um, who, for Kate, who is your favorite astrophysicist? That's yes, this is you have every day. That's from, um, is that from Bad Astronomer? It is. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's a know? famous, he's a famous astrophysicist. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who just interviewed my brother. Uh, and it was, yeah, he's, uh, he's awesome. He's uh, amazing. So he is your favorite. <laughs> he's my favorite. Um, yeah. And here, Erica wants to know, uh, she's 64 and would love to do a little bit of acting. Is it too late to start? Mm. P.S. I also have a qualification of being at an all-girls school, too. Oh, oh so we didn't talk about that. <laughs> um, it's never too late. Oh, my goodness. I still want my mom to get into it. Like, it's never too late. Not at all. Agreed. I think that what makes you different from everyone else is the best possible thing in acting. And I, I, it took me a long time to realize that. And yeah. I think... Yeah, it's like, if you don't look like everyone else in the room, that's, that can only be good. And starting later in life, I think, you know, it's really difficult. I would say 35 to like 55 is really, really, really hard for roles. Yeah. Um, but I think once you get past that, there are a lot of great roles again. And I think it is definitely changing. You know, the industry yes. is so different to, I mean, I lived in LA in, in 1990. I'm sort of dating myself now. Um, mm -hmm. But I arrived in 94 and was there kind of till early 2000. And mm -hmm. it was so, um, just so, like all the women looked exactly the same. I mean, I was like, yeah. I was so young when I arrived. And I remember one of the first auditions that I had, they wanted me to um, to be the mother of three kids. And I was like, well, when did I have them? When I was 11? Yeah. <laughs> And I think yeah. it's changing now completely. Um, so Erica, go for it. It's never, ever, ever, ever too late. Um, for sure. So somebody's saying, I would really, really love to be an actress, but I don't think I can. 
but I would love to know what do you enjoy most about your job? Question for you both. Um, I'm not sure why she can't be an actress. She hasn't. I know. Uh, um, so, Kate, you, you're you're my guest. What would you like to? What do you enjoy most about our job? <laughs> um, it's a very definitely a very challenging business. There's no doubt about that. But I I feel like as a writer. I really appreciate the acting side of things because I get to a point where I can't just be by myself anymore and I can't be in my own head and I can't like, there's something about acting that is just very naturally social and extroverted and all of that. And so I, I that really feeds me. And mm -hmm. the other thing I would say is that you get to, you get to escape, you, you get to really escape and be in this other person's body and, feel someone else's feelings and you get to get stuff out, you know, in a, in a way that I think is very healthy and it all sounds very selfish. I mean, it, it, but it's just, there's something that's very um, therapeutic about it, I think in a weird way. Completely. What would you say? What's yeah. your answer? What's going to be much better? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I think very, very similar. I think that also it's not always something people often say to me, like, why did you choose it? And I don't think I did. I think it chose me. You know, I have a really vivid memory of being about two or three and playing a game where I knew, I obviously didn't know what I was, you know, I wasn't able to, to articulate it, but I knew mm -hmm. I was creating and entertaining. And I grew up largely as an only child. I had two older brothers, but they're quite a lot older than I am. Mm -hmm. And I would play these elaborate games. And from the moment I set foot on stage and met other actors, I was like, <laughs> my tribe, yes. my people, you know. Um, yes. And there is something incredibly collaborative and and it is a drug, you know, when you hear that applause for the first time. I remember getting mm -hmm. a laugh for the first time when I oh did that comedy and everybody was like, oh, girls can't do sound comedy and women aren't funny and yeah. know, go with your tits and all that. And I got yeah. off, I was terrified, terrified, truly the most terrified I've ever been. But somebody in the corner laughed and I was like, <sighs> Oh, oh yeah. Now I can do anything, you know. I was in Oh yeah. So um, it's the greatest feeling. Making yeah, people laugh is the greatest feeling. Yeah, and I god I miss working right now. I can't wait mm. for theaters and, and the film industry to be to be back on track. You know? mm -hmm. Um but of course far more important that we, we stay home and stay safe and how amazing yeah. that we can do this, you know, that yeah. we can have conversations. Um, I know, I know. What would we do without technology? I think there'd be a lot right. more depression right now. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So Irina has asked, um, did you meet for the first time last year in Telford? And what are your best memories of this convention? Um, we did meet for the first time. We did. Um, yeah. So what are your best memories from, from that? Um, that was such a great experience, Kalmar. Thank you again, Will. It was a great experience. So it was lovely. a great experience. Um, it's been a... Oh, we've lost you. Oh, you're... Am I back? Yes, you're back. You're back. Oh, great. Great. Um, I haven't done a convention in a really long time. And so I hadn't done one in a long time. And so going back was was extra fun because I think that feeling I just hadn't had that feeling in a long time yeah um and obviously the guests were all amazing it's just like meeting wonderful new people and I think also I went with a friend of mine Eric and we we played and sang together and I have Beautiful. I'm very very afraid of um of singing in public like really afraid of it mm -hmm. and I got comfortable with it at that convention because it was such a kind audience so it was yeah. like, you know, they're with you, you know, they're not sitting there going like, oh, great, you know, yeah. and, and I, I think that same feeling as when, when you made that person laugh, it, the feeling of being able to sing a few songs and feel super comfortable and not have like a crazy shaky voice. And, yeah. um, you know, I, it was just the first time I actually felt confident singing on stage. Wow, that's an amazing thing to have taken away from that weekend. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, for me, it was also this thing of, uh, I, I truly think like the Stargate family is remarkable. Like it's, I've experienced it all over the world. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I was only in basically one episode with like two tags on either end of another episode. And I oh, okay. gobsmacked, flabbergasted at the amount that still 25 years later, people turn up. 
Um, yeah. But they yeah. are, you know, so warm, so welcoming. And then also just to meet other actors like you guys and mm -hmm. to be, it was so wonderful to be reunited with the, my four, my, my four, my three <laughs> gold uh, compatriots, Cliff Simon, yeah. James and Jacqueline Samuda. And our late night corridor antics, we had some fun. Um, oh my gosh, I bet. But, yeah. Jack, Jacqueline blew my mind. Oh, she's just, she's a goddess. She blew and my mind. We've got her to join Instagram, so everybody go and join. Oh, great. Um, I'm so Yeah, happy. what a woman. What a woman. She'll be one of my guests as well, and I can't wait to chat to her. Uh, great. So how are we? I think we've got like two minutes, no, five minutes left. Okay. Uh, okay. No, no, no. How are I you really so hope Canadian my phone doesn't so die. British? Uh, is a question. Um, oh, so <laughs> That's for me, I guess. I guess, <laughs> I guess my, um, my sense of humor is very British. And my, it's because my family, you know, my parents are both British. Yeah. Everyone in my family was born in England, except for me. And I have my passport. I, we used to go every summer. I used to pretend to be British when I came back. As if, like, I, I, yeah, at that girl's school that I went to in grade five, I pretended I had a British accent for the first three weeks, and everyone already knew me. <laughs> like, but I always have just had a real connection with, with um, British television and film and people, and, yeah. Um, yeah, it's very, very comfortable for me. And working at Mallory Towers was a, was a great experience because of that as well. I think also there is something very um, quintessentially British about Canadians. I remember when I was living in LA and then I went yes. uh, to shoot Stargate up in Canada. And the very first night I was there, I was alone and went off to go and get some dinner. And I walked into the restaurant and the guy said to me, would you like a, servi a serviette? And I was like, mm -hmm. he said serviette and not napkin. Not that there's anything wrong with napkin, but I was ah. used to, you know, that for, for like yeah. 10, 11 years. Um, so I yeah. thought, uh, now we've got questions coming thick and fast and guys, we have like four minutes left. So I think there might okay. be something on here where we can answer them later. Uh, would you be- Oh yeah, that's fine. To I'm walking on. now to my bedroom so that I can plug in <laughs> just so I don't lose you for oh, the yes. last few minutes. I've, yes. Um, any roles or something else in the industry that you are both looking forward to? Uh, does that mean any upcoming roles I'm guessing? Um, you go first, I feel like I'm hogging. Uh, well, I had some really fantastic work planned for this year. Um, and of course, it's all been cancelled. So uh, yeah. I have some, some really lovely film projects to look forward to. Um, and I'm hoping that when we all return to normality, that they will be back. But, um, you know, at the moment, just, just happy to be safe and, and we'll see. Yeah. Um, well, I think... Sorry, that was... That makes me sick. back. <laughs> I'm back with terrible lighting. We've um, survived. Never mind. Well, I've just realized how hot I am because our house is absolutely boiling. I closed all the windows because I didn't want to make a noise. I'm now suffocating. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's warm up here too, actually. The basement, the basement is very cool. Um, yeah, that, what, did you have film, film projects then or theater projects or, yeah, or both? Um, both, actually. And yeah. uh, so we'll see. I mean, you know, fingers crossed everything happens, uh, picks up again in 2021 or hopefully even better this year. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. Uh, for the time being, I, you know, nothing. <laughs> We yeah. wait for the time being. We wait. <laughs> yeah, um, um, I do radio. I do a lot of voiceover. I've been very lucky in that yeah. world, and I I have a whole studio that I set up because I live outside Toronto now. Yeah, and so so far it's actually been okay because I can actually work from home. Yeah, do a bit of radio, and everyone's like frantically changing their ads for the new world. Yeah, exactly. So you could um, yeah. Stay on top so of yeah, so I've been, I've been continuing to work a bit, okay. and hopefully that'll keep up. And I didn't have any projects that were about to start that that got that had the the plug pulled on them. Yeah, um, I just had I, I was nominated for a couple of awards, and the award ceremony got canceled, and they didn't announce oh, any of the winners. But well, so it's almost like that didn't happen. But <laughs> you are a winner in our eyes. Every single day. <laughs> yeah. I was like, is it better to lose? an award during, during a, you know, pandemic or is, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, it's certainly one you will remember. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm afraid we are out of time. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being thank you. such a fantastic guest. Thank you everyone for tuning in and watching us. Uh, 
And so we've done the first couple hosts. Yay! Yay! And uh, yes, next Tuesday, Amanda Tapping will be my guest. So please, please, oh my please do join us for that. I'm going to tune in for that. All right. I look forward to it. Yes, send us a good question. Okay. <laughs> All right, my love. Lots of love. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Bye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Bye.